Hey guys, it's Richard from Nexus Core, and I, today I just wanted to show you the Gold Paladin deck that I took with me to BWC that I updated from the GBT-08 set. So I took this with me to the Worlds in California, at, well, here in California in Pomona, and I just wanted to show you guys what I took with me. So my starter is Knight of Early Dawn Coel. Coel's skill is GB1 Unite. You can move into the soul, look at the top three cards of your deck, pick one, Call it, it gets plus 2k, put the rest back in the deck, and you shuffle. So, really good starter for Unite, typical starter you want to use for a Unite deck. So, this deck is focused around Gurgit, so I'm going to be running four copies of Sunrise Rain Knight Gurgit. I'm running the alt art right now because I wanted to at BWC, and the reason I had two foils and two commons was because uh, I ordered my two foils in the mail uh, before the event, that Saturday, but when they came in the mail, they sent me two commons instead of two foils. So I was like, all right, it's fine. I'll just run the, the foil and the common because I just wanted to run the all art that day. But I, I re it was funny because I actually told them and I told them to reorder it again and send me the two foils and they sent me two more commons. So yeah, that was kind of funny. But uh, so I'm running four copies of Gurgit. Scale is Generation Brick 2, Kind Blast 1, Soul Blast 1. Uh, at the end, uh, beginning of the step that he's attacked, you can pay the cost, look at the top four cards of your deck, call something to the guard circle, and put the rest back in the deck and you shuffle. So pull something from deck, guard him. And his other skill, the stride skill, is when a G unit's placed on him for stride, you count plus one, look at the top four cards of your deck, call something, it gets plus 2k, and the rest go back in the deck and you shuffle. So deck's focused around Gurgit, so we're running four copies of Gurgit. And for my backup, I'm running four copies of Salvation Lion Grand Ezel Scissors. I ran Scissors at Worlds in Pomona for the Link Joker counter, which worked out really well because my first two matchups were Link Joker. I didn't win the first one because I was grade locked and I just lost like momentum. But the second game, I did really well countering Chaos Universe basically eliminating all the, the plussing off the soul blasting and drawing that Chaos Breaker does. So Ezel Scissor has really helped out a lot. So Ezel Scissor's skill is Limit Break, Counter Blast 2, Soul Blast 2. Uh, you unlock all your rear guards during that main phase. And if you have a total of five rear guards right after you unlock, he gets plus 10,000 in a crit. So you just make sure your field is full then you activate his skill, unlock everything, give him plus 10k to crit, and yeah. So sometimes uh, when I was playing the Chaos deck, I didn't really feel like I need, sometimes didn't have to stride. If I really wanted to push, I could just unlock my field and just hit focus with Ezel since he had the crit. And uh, yeah, it was really, I really liked Ezel during that match. It's strictly just for the Link Joker counter. Uh, Ezel's other skill is he gets he got he gets one thousand for each rear guard, so that puts him at twenty six automatically from his limit break. And uh, his other skill is uh, Lord, meaning you just can't attack with him unless you have a gold paladin rear guard. But it's like clan fight; we all have uh, the same clan anyway, so it doesn't really apply there. So I'm gonna go right into the grade two. So my grade two lineup is really weird since I'm running a lot of different copies of grade twos, but uh, I'm just gonna show it to you guys anyways. Three copies of Knight of the Remaining Sun, Henry Nees. Henry Nees, the skill is Combus 1, Soul Blast 1, when he's placed on the rear guard circle. Uh, you look at the top three cards of your deck, call one, put the rest on the bottom. Then if your vanguard is Gurgit, uh, he and the unit you call both get 3k. So I really like this card a lot because it's uh, a better Paramore uh, for an extra Soul Blast. You get to call it anywhere and you, you give it power plus, plus 3k. So he becomes 12k, and the thing you call up gets plus 3k, so adding up power-ups. And his skill doesn't require a Gurgit Vanguard. The only thing that requires a Gurgit Vanguard is the power-up. So if I'm stuck, uh, if I'm riding Ezel, I can still use his skill, I just won't get power. Which is fine, because I'm still getting a free unit. So I really like this card a lot. So even though I'm still I'm running Henry Nees, I'm still running Paramore. I'm only running him at two copies this time. The reason I like still running Paramore is because uh, I like the option of being able to uh, save save soul if I really want to just call something. And his skill's not that bad. So I really I still really like Paramore a lot. So his Unite skill is, if he's in Unite, he gets 2k. So he's 11k on his own. And then his other skills, when he's placed on rear, you can blast one, you'll get a top three, call something to the same column as himself. So it has to be like 
either the same rear guard below him or like on top of him. And then you put the rest on the bottom, you don't shuffle. So I still really like him. He's my ride target. He has really awesome art. So I'm still running him at two. So my grade two lineup has a lot of two ofs and I really like the, how I have a lot of two ofs and it worked out really good, so bear with me. Uh, two copies of Holy Mage Will. So in my last Unite deck profile, I said how Puil wasn't that helpful since a lot of the calling was mostly during the main phase. Puil is still really helpful now because of one grade one in my deck specifically, Horsa, which I'll get into. So Puil helps beef up columns, which is really great. And uh, he helps get extra attacks out to push and add pressure to my opponent's hand so they have to drop more guard. So I use Poil more often in this deck than I did in my last deck. I still want to keep him at two because I haven't really found that I need it at three, especially since this deck counterblasts a lot. And if I'm running Poil on my play, if my, if my play is to run Poil at the turn of, and my idea is I need Poil for the counterblast, that's already three counterblasts or two essentially if you count the unflip from raining that I'm going to be using each turn. And unless I'm unflipping every single turn, I'm going to run out of resources really quick. And also, if you're counting the counterblast I might use for Henrynes and Paramore, that can be anywhere between three to four counterblasts per turn. So this deck is a super counterblast heavy deck. It needs a lot of unflipping. So I try to limit myself to the combos that I do and try and keep it consistent. So I like keeping Pull at two. So if I see one, I can use it. And if it dies, I don't really feel that bad because my deck isn't focused around Pull. Pull is just there to maybe increase the number of attacks. So I'm really liking Pull. So, you know, Amber Clone, on boost, Canvas One, call something you can be uh, during the battle phase. So next up on my grade twos, I'm still running Bowler Goal, only at two copies. I'm loving Bowler Goal because when you call it, and you're in Unite, it gets plus 5k. So it's a 14k beater, and with a 7k boost, that's what? A 21k column. And when you combine that with Horsa, he gets power-ups on his own. I've had uh, a game at a Locals where Bowler Goal himself reached up to a 48k column, and that, honestly, it helped. That extra 5k helped because my opponent couldn't have, didn't have the extra 5k because of Bowler Goal's skill. So I've had games where Bowler Goal pushes for that extra amount and wins me the game. So I'm really still liking Bowler Goal, and I like how like if I write it, I don't mind. If I call it, it's still a really good call. It's just a really great card. I'm still keeping him at two. And lastly, for my grade twos, I'm running two copies of Knight of the Faint Sun, Marsha. You pretty much need Marsha in a Unite deck because this deck, or at least in this deck, you're gonna be counterblasting a lot. So you need to unflip a lot. And I realized this after I tried playtesting without Marsha that I would run out of counter blast all the time. And even with the soul charging and counter and unflipping from Glorious Raining and even from Jerry the Stand Trigger, I still wanted to have Marsha to unflip even more so I could do more combos the next turn. So uh, Marsha's skill, I'll just get into it, is Unite. Uh, at the end of the turn, either your turn or your opponent's turn, you can move her to the soul and you unflip. So she builds up soul and she unflips, which is for Gurgit, it can be for uh, Glorious Rain for the unflip, it can be for Sunrise Radiant Sword Gurgit to build up soul. It's just a really, really good card, and I'm really happy that I have this card. And uh, two, I would think, is the least you need. Any less than two, I would think, might, you would probably have must have a better unflipping engine. But I, I like it at the two. Really, really good card. So I'm gonna go right into the grade ones. So because I'm running the alt art Gurgit, I'm also running alt art Gorbaduck. So Gorbaduck is the stride fodder. You you know reveal a grade three, search for Gurgit to hand, discard, and he costs. He gets grade plus two when you pay the cost for stride. So stride deck, stride fodders, and now we're gonna get into what I believe is probably the best grade one in this whole deck. And it's surprising how people don't really think about how this card works because the wording of the skill doesn't seem like it does much. So his skill is Unite. So he has to be in Unite first. Uh, when he's in Unite, when something in the same column, or when something is placed, sorry, when something is placed on rear guard circle, his skill activates if he's in Unite. So Unite, something is placed. Uh, he and the unit in the same column as himself both get 2K. So let's give a good example. 
let's pull out Puel. So let's say the column is here, and you're in you're in Unite, or you called one thing, and then you called a second thing. Now you're in Unite, and because Horse's skill activates on Unite, the thing called activates a skill. So plus 2k here, plus 2k here. Let's say you call another thing from hand. Plus 2k here, plus 2k here. Call another thing from hand. Plus 2k here, plus 2k. That's literally plus 12,000 to the column. And then if you call Horsa out from Glorious Raining, let's say you call out one, two, three things. So now, because you're in Unite, Horsa's skill activates. So he, would, he activates for every other rear called. So since one, two other things were called other than himself, this column would get plus 8,000 power. So that's already beefing up your numbers. And even let's say you don't boost with this and you use Glorious Raining to pull out other stuff, the column that is called in front of him gets the power up as well. And it's just a really, 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 really good card. And I'm loving it. So this card is the card that helped Bowler Goal get up to a 48k column. That's what, that's basically what it is. This card is just so good that Anytime I play against uh, my, anytime I play against Atlas or Matt, they and they have something that can retire. They they pretty much want to get rid of this card first. So if you're playing against a gold pile in deck and you see this card in the field, you want to get rid of it because this is the card that builds up big numbers. It's basically the unite version of Bruno. That's what this card is, and it's really 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 good. So after me ranting about Corsa, let me just go into my next grade one. So. I'm putting uh, Jeffrey down to two. Well, I had him at four before because he was a really great card, but I decided to put him down to two to make up room for uh, Horsa. So, uh, Sunrise, uh, Sunshine Knight Jeffrey's skill is Unite. At the end of the battle, he boosts. You move him to soul and you draw. So he's a draw engine, essentially. I like him better than Kugel because you can call it from hand and still get the skill off where Kugel has to be from deck, and if you draw Kugel, he's a dead card. And he fills up the soul. So Jeffrey is a really good card. The reason I want to run him at two is because uh, I try not to draw as much out of my deck. If I can get that plus draw, it's nice. And I also have a Scarface Lion crit trigger for draws if I want to draw during the battle phase. Um, the only thing is if I last list with my other Unite deck, I, was, I would either have to finish the game really quick before I decked out because I was drawing a lot with Jeffrey, but I had to use Jeffrey's skills because I wanted to build up the soul a lot. So. I like Jeffrey at two, and the deck works really well with him. When he does show up, he is really helpful. The main thing about this deck is really weird. I can run two copies of cards and still see them, because Glorious Raining and Henry Knees and pulling all the cards in the deck, look at the top three, top four, top seven, even, for cards. So it's really easy to find what you're looking for in a somewhat toolboxy manner, because you're not actually looking through the deck, you're only looking through the top few cards. But anything in this deck that you can find can still be a really good target. So. I'm liking it, this at two. And I'm gonna go right into my uh, random Malagant. I'm still running Malagant at the one. I initially was thinking about having, not running Malagant at all, thinking I had enough unflips and putting Jeffrey at three. Reason I'm still running Malagant is because when he shows up, it's so helpful. Because I have enough soul, usually, to soul blast and unflip two. And if that unflip two, if I call it out, really helps with Glorious Raining if I, use Glorious Raining Kill and I just call out him, and let's say I also call out Henry Knees, but I don't have a Counter Blast for Henry Knees, even, or let's say I call out Henry Knees and Paramore or something, and if I want to use two Counter Blasts but I only have one face up, I can use uh, Malagant skill when he's placed to Soul Blast 2, Unflip 2, and get more Counter Blast during the, during the battle phase. And, you know, I often find him maybe twice a game, and it's funny because, you know, um, Slamy Flare recycles stuff, you can put it back in your deck, and I'll pull it out later. Glorious Raining puts stuff at the bottom of the deck, and I can pull it out later. So I'm really liking Malagant still at the one. So I'm still taking him in at one. So lastly, for my really weird grade one lineup deck, I'm instead running four, not running four copies of the Unite PG, but I'm doing three copies of Bridery and one copy Lavania. I really, really thought about this, you guys, I promise. So the reason I used to run four copies of Lavania, and I loved it. I loved it a lot. I loved the ability to just use Glorious Raining, find Lavania, put a trigger back or something back in my deck, and have a free PG back in my hand. It was great. Only one problem. This deck needs to unflip a lot. So 
Another thing is it must be my luck, but every time I run a PG in this deck, a, I always draw into it, every time. So I thought about it and I went, I could either draw into Lavania and maybe use her, sometimes, a lot of times I maybe use her skill like once a game. And then the rest of the times I'm just drawing and doing normal PGs. And I'm thinking to myself, I could just be running the unflipping PGs and get my unflips so I can do more counterblasting and more defensive stuff with Gurgit or more counterblasting abilities uh, during my next turn. And it it ended up being really, really helpful. So the unflips from Bridery help a lot, especially if your opponent notice, knows that Gurgit needs counterblast and they want to try something like only attacking with their vanguard. If they have another column, they might not want to attack just so you don't have any unflip for the PG. So you can't do anything the next turn, really. So having the ability to perfect guard and unflip so you can guarantee yourself at least one counterblast for the turn is really, really, really helpful. Reason I'm running the one Lavania is because I really like her skill. So I'm just going to get right into it. Her skill is normal perfect guard from hand to protect your vanguard. So she, she can only protect the Vanguard and she doesn't get any ability from the Guard Circle. Her other circle, which is a really, really great, great skill, is Unite. So you have to, so she has to be placed when you're already in Unite. Uh, or she has to be placed as the second card for the Unite skills. When she's placed, uh, you can choose one of your other rear guards and put it on the bottom of your deck. At the end of the turn, she goes back to your hand. So it's basically, you can, if you see this and search it out and go, hey, look, a booster, I can now call this, and, and I know for sure I can get a PG back in my hand for defense, it's just really, really, really nice. You can, I'm, I'm assuming you guys can already see how great this card is. So my four PGs, doing three unflips, one of this. This, uh, I un this is really fine for me. So if you guys want to try this out, you can. I know people run the normal like Trial Deck or Halo Shield Mark Perfect Guards so they can use Gurgit's GB2. I'm gonna be honest, I really never, ever, ever, when I was running the uh, Candice PGs in my other Unite deck, I rarely saw that PG, like in most of my games, when I was doing the Guard skill. So, but because this deck is pretty offensive and pretty defensive when it comes to hand, the normal, the unflipping Perfect Guards work really well for me. So, uh, I will now get right into the triggers. My triggers, again, th this is a really weird deck, you guys. I'm just going to tell you that straight up. I'm running four Scarface Lion for the crits, and I'm also running three Flame of Victory crits. So I'm actually running seven crits. And uh, you guys will see why what the, uh, what the other extra card is going to be for this deck. So Scarface is your uh, uh, Heart Thump clone. You know, when you have a Gregor Vanguard, move to solely draw. Uh, I'm running, I maxed him out because I really want to be able to, if I, if I'm the player going first and I ride Gurgit first, I can at least call Scarface from hand to get an extra draw and give Gurgit more power. So for early game, which is why most people run, max out this card. And I'm running three, I'm trimmed down through Flame of Victory to the three rather than Scarface to the three because, uh, Flame of Victory is, uh, just an Amber clone. And I really do like his skill, it's been really helpful. But for mostly uh, Scar, I want to maximize Scarface so I can see it more often in case I want to do the early game attack. And also Scarface draws extra cards. So if I call it from deck, you know, it's an extra free draw. So after the seven crit, I'm actually running five stands. So, but I'm still running the four player of the Holy Pipe Jerry and I'm running one gigantic ringer. This was a really funny tech and this was just basically Atlas saying, why don't you run, run one gigantic ringer? And I thought of it and went, that kind of that, I don't know about that. But what was ended up being at BWC is I saw this card so much, and it was really, really, really funny uh, how it worked with Glorious Raining. I don't want to run it at two, because I still want to be able to have a lot of pressure with the crits in this deck, because other than crit, other than being able to attack repeatedly, this deck really has no, I guess, fear in it. Like, if Glorious Raining attacks for like just the 26 or the 31 number. And if my opponent knows I only run six crits, then they they were maybe be more likely to just go two to pass and, not, and maybe not worry about me getting crits or say no guard and not worry about me getting crits. So I really wanna still keep it at seven so I see crits more often. And I wanna keep Jerry maxed out at four because this deck needs to unflip. So I decided to put in the one Jagged Screamers attack because it shows up and it gets me a draw and, it, and it's a recyclable trigger. 
So I'll go right into their skills. So Jerry's skills unite. Uh, at the end of the battle, they do boost or attack, which is uh, he must move to the soul and you unflip. So his skill is mandatory. At the end of the battle, they attacks or, or boost. He has to go to the soul. So the only thing is when you're when you're playing Glorious Reigning, if you call if you have two rear guards and 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 Jerry is one of them, and you if you attack with that column and try to attack with Glorious Reigning and move the the Jerry to the bottom, it's not going to work because you have to use his skill because it's continuous. So it's continuous and the auto skill activates right after right at the end of the battle. So just be mindful of that when you're playing Glorious Reigning that. This has to move to the soul at the end of the at the end of its battle, and then Gigantic Ringer's skill, which is a really really lovely card from back in GBT03 that I missed. Uh, his skill is GB1. When another card is placed on rear guard circle, uh, well, this is auto. So basically, whenever another card is placed on rear, this this card activates. It triggers, and you can move it back to the deck, shuffle draw and give the thing called plus 5k. So I really like this card because it works with Pwill, again, like the old days. It works with Glorious Raining because if I call it out, I can put it back in the deck and give whatever the other card's called plus 5 and I draw. So it puts a trigger back in the deck. So I'm literally just running Gigantic Mirror for the plus 5 power up and the draw and not really for the sense that it's, it's a stand trigger. Other than if, if Gigantic Ringer didn't have its skill, you know, it's just that I wouldn't be running the stand. That's Kind of obvious, so. One gigantic ringer for Jerry, for my stands. And lastly, running four curable angel heal triggers for G guardians and free unflipping heals. Or free unflips basically because heals heal kind of blasted damage. So now let's get into the important card. I'm just gonna go right up and talk about this card, golden dragon, glorious reigning dragon. This card is like, Amazing. It's the game winner for most of my games because this thing alone can get me anywhere between four to five attacks during the turn. So Glorious Reigning skill is when he attacks, you may pay the cost. So on attack, counterblast one, flip up a copy of himself, and you pick two of your other rear guards and you put them at the bottom of the deck. Afterwards, you look at the top seven, seven cards of your deck, which is a lot. You get the top seven cards of your deck, and from among those seven, you can call any number uh, or the same number of cards in that seven equal or less to the same number of cards in your G zone face up. So it's similar to Spear Cross. It is better than Spear Cross. This, in my opinion, replaces Spear Cross because it's that good. Other reason it's really good is because his other skill, or continuing on to the same skill, not his other skill, it is after you called your units, if you called three or more things, he gets to soul charge and unflip. Basically, like repaying his own cost and giving you a free soul. That is just too good. It's just too good because that gives you, uh, that gives you resources for Henrynes, uh, Gurgit, Radiant Sword Gurgit, and it's, it's just a really, really good card. This thing combos off with Horsa. Any, when you want to, if Horsa is called and like three other things are called, Horsa gives him and the other column plus 2k for each other thing called, including the unit in front of him. So this, this, this card can make, whenever this attacks and this shows up, can make this thing at least anywhere between a, 26, a 21 to a 26k column just by his skill alone. So this card is basically amazing. I recommend running four copies because after you do it the first time, you're going to want to do it the second time because it's that much fun. And by then, uh, if you have to use all four copies, your opponent's probably running low on hand because they guarded so many attacks. And it, it's honestly, this is it's just a combo card because now, at least in the other Unite deck, we didn't really have much option for battle phase superior calling since Radiant Sword Gurgit was your finisher and it was his ability was uh, main phase and then you just battled with big numbers. This is now basically forcing your opponent to anticipate really, really, really big attacks for or really big multiple attacks during your turn. And at the end, you're going to have a bunch of cards in your hand from calming off all the Unite skills. So four copies of Glorious Raining. Really, really great card. 
and I'm still running the two copies of Radiant Sword Gurgit because he's got a nice skill. Uh, I use them every now and then, but not too often. Uh, Radiant Sword is Unite, GB2, Counter Blast 1, Soul Blast 2. All your rear guards get plus 5, and he gets plus 5 for each rear guard. So beefy numbers, uh, making really great, really big columns. Not really a battle phase card, but if I just want to build up and waste and lower down my opponent's hand, I go into this. I often don't go into the second one, but I like to run two just in case I feel like, oh man, I really wish I had another Radiant Sword so I can do that again. So I want to keep two as my option. So because I'm running Ezel, I'm still running the two copies of Absolution, Lion King, Mithrazel. I am. Th I thought about running four. The only thing about it is my GZM doesn't really have room for four unless I take out uh, Scourge Point, Abracus, or, or Rising Shine, or, or like Seabreeze. And I really don't want to, because uh, that would just be me taking out one Radiant Sword, one of those guys, to run four. I like... I just like my Juzum the way it is, and I've had it where I use those units more often than Ezel. And also the deck focuses more around Gurgit than Ezel. So Ezel, it's just basically just for the Link Joker counter. The only I wouldn't want to run four uh, because it, I am only running this for anti-Link Joker since Glorious Raining and all the other units still work really, really well with Ezel. So I'd rather do this. The only reason, the other reason I really like having Mithril, other than the Link Joker counter, is because Glorious Raining needs three cards face up to unflip and to unflip and Soul Charge. So if you ride Ezel, you stride into this as your first stride. You're already unflipping an Ezel for his skill. Just maybe you don't need to unlock. Maybe you just want to call stuff, power up. And at the end of the turn, you have two, and then you go into Glorious Raining. Where is Glorious Raining? You go into Glorious Raining, stride it. Flipping home and face up, that's already three by your second stride. So it's a lot easier to get the three face up if you're riding in Gurgit. I mean, riding in Ezel. But I prefer not to ride into Ezel often because I really want to use Gurgit's skills. And But I still like, if I do have to ride Ezel, I still like being able to do that and then still go right into Glorious Raining. So Mithra Ezel, uh, basically act or once per turn kind of one flip a copy of itself over unlock all your rear guards then you look at the top five call something and the thing you called uh basically doubles its base power and then you can also increase uh ezel's power by the base power of the unit called so it's kind of like og blonde ezel which is really nice so running it for the anti-lane joker and to get uh glorious rainings go off easy if i ride ezel so next up, I am going to go and show you guys my one ofs for genus. One Golden Knight of Incontestus Abracus, one Scourge Point Dragon, uh, one Golden Dragon Rising Shine Dragon. So I'm going to start with Abracus. So I still like Abracus because I have often times where I just want to build a field and I know if my opponent maybe has like, if it's my first try and my opponent has maybe like four, five cards, six cards in hand, I don't really have to worry about pressuring them with or having to chain calls, I can just maybe get a call out. Or maybe if I don't really have any things in my hand to call stuff, I can still depend on Ibrakis to maybe find something. Uh, it combos with Gurgit to get Unite off right away. So Ibrakis' skill is when he's when he, as soon as he's placed on the Vanguard Circle, count last one, soul last one, look at the top two, call one, put on the bottom. So he's not that great, so you don't even want to run him at one. But he's still a nice card to, rut, to stride as your first stride, just to fill up a field and let the other rear guards start powering up and build, doing their ability. So he really helps set that up. Running, still running the one, I'm running one Scourge Point now because uh, if I do have Quill and Heronese and like Corson, I want to make like really, really big columns. Uh, Scourge Point still helps a lot and maybe a first stride. All these are basically like your first stride options other than as uh, Mithra Ezel for if I ride Grand Ezel Scissors. So Scourge Point skills, anytime a rear guard is called, uh, the unit called and Scourge Point go, both get 5,000 barrels. So he stacks up. Every time something's called, he gets plus five, and everything called gets the plus five as well. So really good for like a first turn big number hitter, but the ideal first stride that I always go into is always Golden Dragon, Rising Shine Dragon for uh, multiple reasons. So I'm gonna move these over here, talk about this. So reason I go into Rising Shine first is because he has on hit pressure like Campbell. So his skill is, when he attacks, if he hits the vanguard, you can pay the cost, you counter blast one, choose any G, G unit, turn it face up, and you look at the top three cards, and you call two, 
and you put the third one on the bottom. So he pulls out two other units for maybe an, another, an, another additional attack, and he flips something face up in your G-Zone. So at the end of the battle, or at the end of your turn, when he goes back, you have two face up. And because Glorious Rain needs three to get his unflip and soul charge, you can now get the you can now get Glorious Raining skill off as your second stride pretty easy if this hits. And because this is on hit pressure, if your opponent's at like two damage, but they really want more damage to do more counter blast, they're gonna debate whether they really want to take the damage and let me do my skills, or whether they want to perfect guard it and still be at a low amount of damage and not have as much access to counter blast. So I'm really liking these three. Like I was saying before, if I wanted to run more copies of Mithrazel, I would have to take out one Radiant Sword and maybe one of these. But because I like all of them equally, I don't really want to take any of them out, so I'm still running Mithrazel at the two. So I'll go right into Seabreeze. Seabreeze is your anti-grade two game, which is, his skill is if your opponent's at grade two and they didn't ride the last turn, you count blast two, discard any card from your hand, and you already paid the cost for stride, and you stride right into Seabreeze, and you have GB1 activated, basically. And at the end of the turn, goes back face up, and you have GB1 for the rest of the game. So Seabreeze is just, you know, every deck pretty much has it now. Anti-grade two game, you know, really puts pressure on your opponent if they don't have their grade three. So running one Seabreeze. And now I'm just gonna go into the G-Guardian. So I was running five G-Guardians uh, last Gold Paladin video, now I'm running four again to make up for the space. And uh, so I'm running one of this, uh, two Slamming Flares and one Screw. So I'm gonna go right into Rhea first. Rhea's the generic, uh, when she's called to the Guardian Circle, you, if you have two rear guards, she gets a plus five K shield. So he's a, she's a 31 defense generic, pretty easy to get off if you have two rear guards. And then I'm going into Slamey Flare, which is your really big guardian, which uh, pretty much is gonna be guarding most of the big attacks from your from your opponent's vanguard. So Slamey Flare's skill is when it's placed in the guardian circle, pick one of your rear guards from the bottom of your deck. So now you're recycling stuff back to your deck. And then you look at the top five, and you can call up to two things, up to two cards from that top five if they are of different grades to the Guardian Circle. So, and you put the wrestling deck and you shovel. So he can go, he can basically make a 41K shield total, including your, uh, or a, a, a four, is it? Yeah, so including the, the base for your, your Vanguard, just 11. Totaling it up, it can add up to 41,000 defense because you can call a trigger and a 5k unit like a grade 2 or a grade 1. So anything that's like 26 will now become uh, 3 to pass, and anything that's 31 will become 2 to pass, just from using Slamy Flare. Uh, reason I'm not running more Slamy Flares and more Rhea's and I'm running Screw is because both Rhea and Slamy require rear guards for their skills to activate. And if you're playing against a control deck, and let's say your field is locked or your field is empty because Kagura retired everything, you can't really use these abilities. So the reason I'm running Screw is because Screw's ability uh, doesn't depend on your field, it just depends on your hand. So Screw is, um, when you space on guard circle, if you have a face-up G unit already, you can discard a card from your hand and he gets plus 10,000 shield. So I don't use this too often, but I have had situations from locals where I'll, I won't I won't have uh, enough field, or I won't have the field at all to use either the other two G guardians. But I, but screw would just be enough to make it two to pass, or you know would add on to the shield to help me defend. So I'm still liking the screw at the one copy. So that was pretty much my gold paladin deck profile. Uh, I took that to BWC and I did pretty well, and I'm pretty proud of the deck and. You know, I know it's really, really, really weird. I have a lot of, I have a lot of techs, I have a lot of two ofs in this deck, but it works really, really, really well. So that was basically the deck, centered around Gurgit, and I'm still looking forward to seeing what type of support we're getting in GBT10. GBT and that's pretty much it, you guys. So leave a comment, leave a like, let me know what you think, and yeah, I'll see you around.